Now let me introduce to you Dr. Yevgeny Bayerman, CSO of Continuous Biometrics Limited. Dr. Yevgeny Bayerman is a Chief Research Officer at Continuous Biometrics. He holds a Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering, a Master of Science in Interdisciplinary Engineering Studies from Tel Aviv University in Israel. He holds his PhD in Mathematics and Electro-Optics from Bar Ilan University, Israel. Yevgeny is a co-inventor of six patents and author of more than 20 papers and two book chapters. Continues develops remote and unified biometric sensor platform for e-health, Internet of Things, mobile and consumer devices. It is based on remote, contactless, active and continuous biometric scanning. The system actively and continuously measures biomedical parameters, providing authentication and biocompetence information of individuals. Now that's intense, probably quite in depth. <laughs> Please welcome Mr. Bayerman. Thank you, God. Uh, good afternoon. So uh, today I will present to you um, our company, uh, Destructive Technology. Um, I'll give you some overview of what we are doing and I'll explain you what, how we do it. And I hope it will be uh, interesting for you. Uh, so my name is Yevkeny. Uh, I'm from uh, Continuous Biometrics. Um, uh, so w what we are doing, we develop a remote, unified and comprehensive biometric sensor. This one is uh, fully remote, it does not require any contact with your skin, with your body. And I think it's uh, quite innovative, I will explain you in details. So a little bit about us, we are Israeli corporation founded uh, one year ago. We are a fusion of uh, academy and the industry. Actually, we are uh, um, around uh, 30 employees. Half of them are researchers uh, coming from a university. And we are developing technology, this technology for uh, past 10 years. We have a very vast experience. And the, um, as I said, the last year we established a company and we now we're now taking the, this technology to the market. We have employees in Israel, Spain, and uh, California, and we expect to get the first product on the market by uh, the end of this year. Um, so a little bit about the uh, founders. So Asher Pawan is our CEO. Professor Zelzelewski is a co-founder, and he's very known for his innovative way of thinking. Maybe the best uh, or most known thing is the uh, Xbox Kinect. Probably you know this device. So he provided the underlying technology for this device and the first stages and many, many other inventions. Uh, Professor Javier Garcia Monreal is a collaborator, our main collaborator for past uh, more than 20 years and myself. So we are four established the company. And um, now what we are doing. So you're, it's uh, me and uh, on the left is our uh, device. So this is an electro-optical device, which is capable of capturing from a remote your biome biomedical parameters. Moreover, it's capable to identify who are you. We can do it practically from any visual distance, from few centimeters up to hundreds of meters. So on the, on the right side, you see our um, uh, display which is capable to capture simultaneously in real time the heartbeat, saturation, and the respiration rate of you, and moreover, can identify you out of the database. So let's see a short movie, how does it work in real time. So this is Mark, he comes to in front of the uh, device. He's being identified, and his basic parameters are measured after a few seconds. Now another person comes, He's identified again, even from his back, and again, his uh, medical parameters are uh, monitored. Now let's see what will happen if, we will, if uh, he will make some exercises. He's very happy, by the way, <laughs> doing this. 
Uh, OK. OK, well, again, we capture his uh, identification basic parameters. But now you can see that his blood pressure went up by 30% uh, comparing to the previous uh, capturing. OK. Uh, no, no, not yet. It will come. Thank you. Okay. Now le let's continue a little bit. So Mark come again. We identify him. But now we can also hear. One second. I'll come back to this again. You can hear his. heartbeat sound. We can capture his heartbeat sound from remote and you can listen to it in real time. You can do this also through the smoke. We don't have, a, we don't film a video. We can do the same thing from a smoke. By the way, this smoke does not come from the sensor. Okay, don't worry. <laughs> okay. Uh, so the alarm, the uh, smoke alarm went out. Uh, so this is w the basic thing what our device uh, does. Let's do a little bit uh, more experiments. This is Lydia in the uh, video and Nadav. So they, may, they compare the results I show you with the uh, common, um, uh, common medical device for uh, measuring heartbeat, it's called PPG device. So our uh, monitor is, a, is the upper one, the lower one, the lower number is the heartbeat. So you can see it's pretty close, it's 62 and 60, so very, very, very much uh, close to the uh, medical standards, but we do it without a contact through close. Okay, now let's see, let's, uh, let's make another experiment. Let's uh, give to Lydia uh, another code. He will put herself more close. And let's see if it works. OK. Let's connect her back. OK, it's pretty well uh, closed. One to another. Let's make it even more harder. Let's give her more close. Let's see if we still get a signal. Okay, she's thinking another another code. Okay, we'll get the result in a second. Okay, okay, we get uh, pretty close results as well. He will put another one just to be sure it works. I will make the short, uh, the, the, long, uh, the long story short, it will be uh, working. Okay, so we develop a technology which capturing your baseline parameters from remote. Okay, as I mentioned, it's heartbeat, duration, respiration, it can know who are you, okay? But moreover, it can know if you taken some glucose or some sugar, or you have taken some alcohol. So this device can also compare your state before and after a uh, meal. OK, moreover, as I mentioned before, we can capture sounds. But not just, a so just sound, we can capture the sound and uh, separate it from the noise. OK, what I'll show you now is a real experiment we did. We took. Uh, uh, w w we uh, record with the microphone uh, as a speaking uh, person in a noisy music, and we did the same experiment with our device in the same environment, and you will see the difference. <laughs> So you hardly hear now the counting of a person, one, two, three, four, five. There was a person who was counting. You hardly hear him. We capture the same thing with our device. How does it hear? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
it's not loud enough, but you don't hear a, a toad in music. We just capture the sound of a person we are looking on. And we are agnostic completely to the noises around. It's happening by, the, by itself, by the technology itself. There is no algorithmic processing. There is no um, uh, blind source separation and techniques like that. It just happens by applying our technology. OK, so initial sound application we are uh, targeting on is a remote stethoscope. Just imagine your doctor will have a device which can hear your heart without touching you, without a stethoscope. Or uh, you can hear your child at home without touching him, how his heart is beating. It's uh, quite appealing, in my opinion. Another thing is a hearing focus, just what I explained in the previous uh, slide. And more, uh, it's uh, device monitoring, just hearing and uh, air conditioning on the wall or how your motor works from remote. Um, more applications here, as I said, is air conditioning, monitoring motors, monitoring uh, automotive, monitoring. Uh, here we have some examples just to show you how we capture the sound. This is a laser, you see a laser beam coming from our device. We're pointing on a wall, and there is no noises around. You will just hear a little, uh, a little uh, background, almost nothing. Now we point on the motor and turn the motor on. We're capturing the sound of the motor from remote. You can hear the noise of the motor. But to show you how our technology is sensitive, we're now pointing our laser on a wall, on adjacent wall, and we'll hear this motor vibrating the wall. You hear almost the same, but not directly from the motor. Okay? And the same thing uh, on, a, on, on a closed table. We still uh, feel the vibration which motor impose on the surroundings. This, the, second, uh, the, next, the next example, how we capture a sound from very long distance, like more than 100 meters here in this uh, example. We put a, a cell phone on a wall, mounted on a wall, 100 meters away. We point it with our device to the cell phone, and we could hear what is said on this cell phone. Sorry, the sound is not so good here, but it just show you the capability of the system. We could capture heartbeat sounds from 400 meters away from us. You can hardly see a person, but we could hear his heartbeats. Okay, so the landscape of uh, our advantages of our technologies uh, is a distance measurement. Most of the devices which are capable to do things like we do are uh, now coming in contact. We do it from a distance, practically from any visual distance. We're agnostic to position. We can uh, do it from the front or from behind. We are one sens sensor, does it all. Uh, usually the, uh, to measure your heartbeat or to measure your respiration, you need different sensors. In our sensors, we measure all these parameters from one sensor. And uh, we can do it, as I said, uh, uh, without pointing in a specific place. We can do it around all the body. More things, we are agnostic to environment. We can put more clothes, you can put more clothes on, your, on, your, on yourself. It does not affect our results. You can uh, close, uh, close your face. We don't make a face recognition. We can do it at night or in day. Uh, so it's very robust uh, device. Our form factor will be uh, as, as small as uh, five millimeters by five millimeters by two millimeter sensor, which can come uh, into the PC or mobile uh, or tablet and they're capable to work uh, up to 1.5 meters from this size. It's um, keep your privacy, we don't take pictures, we don't save your pictures. 
uh, and it's uh, quite secure because it's uh, not so easy to hack. Not, to, not so easy to hack this uh, technology. So how, how it happens? So we have a unique and uh, patent uh, remote nanoscale assessment on surface, mo of surface motions. I will explain what is this. Actually, we use a camera and a laser. This is the basic thing so we have. And uh, what we are doing, we proje we are projecting, pr projecting a laser beam on a surface of interest. And we film this projection of back reflected light with a camera. And we analyze these reflections. Once a movement of, of surface happens, we see a certain change in the reflections. And using a special optic and special algorithms we developed, we will know with a, with a very high accuracy of tens of nanometers what happens, what is happening with the remote surface. All this regard, regardless the distance. As long as the distance, the sensitivity even a little bit better. Okay? So the core things are our optics, algorithmics, and this uh, optical setup. Uh, so the solution is to measure these vibrations and to analyze them. Because we found these vibrations are unique per person. When I'm saying I can, can identify you, it's actually I can capture the vibrations of the surface of your body imposed by the heart, by the heart activity, and I can know you, you, who, are, who are you from the DAP database because each one is unique. Vibrations of each one of us are, are unique because everybody has a different body construction, different heart size, and so on. So we, we actually platform. We're developing a platform. We, we will serve the community for uh, biomedical needs, for, uh, or for, for uh, hearing aid needs, um, for elderly care, and, and so on. So we believe we will come with a sensor which will uh, give a new era of sensing which is touchless, remote, painless, and will, quite, will be quite a low cost. So the parameters we are measuring, as I mentioned before, many biomedical parameters. Uh, the use case is um, as many as you can imagine. It can be elderly care at home, it can be smart car, it can be access control, uh, fitness uh, monitoring, personal TV customization, and so on and so on. You could go with this. And the markets uh, also matching this use case. So the uh, devices we, we see or we are developing, a platform we're developing, it covers um, uh, from the short range to the mid range. Where it starts from the wearable devices. You see now a lot of market. Some of them are optical with the optical technologies. We came with our optical technologies. We were pioneers in this uh, in these fields where almost no optical technologies were introduced to the uh, wearable devices. Now it's very very common. Uh, the second range is the short range is mobile devices, which can authenticate you, can monitor your health. And the, the mid-range is smart appliances or IoT, and, and so on. So in, 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 in a means of market uh, where we, we can find our niche or we can provide our solution, it, it's quite a big market. So it's, uh, you, you can see uh, it's access control, uh, smart home, uh, all these uh, uh, smart wearables, healthcare, Mobile, biometric, all these markets are growing markets, and all of them are tens of billions, tens of billions per year. Uh, about the segments where we, where we can install our device, um, the uh, biggest segment is the smartphones. Now, now it's produced by billions per year, per uni units, billion units per year. Uh, PCs, tablets, smart TV, all of them are hundreds of millions per year. And the biggest market, as, it's, uh, as it is uh, uh, expected by now, will be the IoT market. 
expected to be 26 billion devices per year in 2020. Um, so we believe our device can, be, can feed this market very well. Also about the growth of this market, you can see that most of the market are growing more or less linearly per year. But the IoT market will grow almost exponentially. So this is a um, very interesting field of, uh, uh, field of interest, our interest. And as I see in, in, in this uh, conference and uh, in a show, and other show, I, everybody has IoT solutions because everybody believes this will be the biggest, biggest market for the next stages. So just to finalize what we have, we are remote, unified biometric sensor for identification, health, and general monitoring. And we are agnostic to distance, position, dress, type, and environment. Thank you very much for your attention. We've got 10 minutes, actually, for questions, right? So, what would you like to know? You do have questions. Hello. You said that the device is not yet available, so it's at the end of the year. What about the price of this uh, small uh, device? So, the, the uh, basic technology is not expensive. As I said, it's a camera, camera and a laser. So, these things are inexpensive now, right now on the market. Mm -hmm. So, the uh, bill of materials is, is very cheap, it's a few dollars. The price on the market, it's, uh, oof, it's hard to say right now. Depends on the market, depends on device, on the use case. Mm -hmm. But I, I believe it will, it, will, it will be affordable to everyone. Mm -hmm. And what about the, the interfaces that you pro pro provide on this device? It's Wi-Fi or uh, some not oh, technology? Yeah, well, currently we have a Wi-Fi. It's possible to adapt it to, to everything. Yeah. I imagine your, your happiest clients would be police and intelligence authorities because now they can listen to everyone everywhere. Well, you we, can we, put we, that in the street, you can focus your camera, and you can listen to everyone who, who is talking. Well, we, we do not target this market. We, you, we, be, we are not company. We, we do not target um, You authorities. don't need to target them. They love you. <laughs> and they <laughs> buy good. everything. That's good. They we buy love everything people you who love us. So, you, you, you know, what you offer is a game changer. It's like, you, you know, it's like the, phys the physicist who said, you know, it's, uh, yes, you can make a nuclear bomb, but, uh, <laughs> but it's, uh, I, I don't think you need it. What, if, if this goes into the market, all governments spy it and have, and have the opportunity to spy on everyone. I mean, I would spy on my neighbors. Well, Sell it to me for 100 this is euro, illegal, I'd you know. love it. You know, I wouldn't watch television or YouTube anymore. I just listen to everyone in the street. I mean, this is fun, isn't it? Yeah, th th that's fun, but it will be more fun if you can help somebody, right? Of course. If you can hear his heartbeat is wrong, and you can send him to a doctor. Or you can uh, help your uh, elder parents to monitor them at home, they're alone. So we believe in these markets. These markets are hu uh, bigger. We, are, um, we believe in, in medical devices. We don't go to, to, to security things. Um, this is our goal, this is our mainstream, mm -hmm. so that's uh, where we are focusing now. Where we are focusing but how, how do you, I mean, is there any way to protect this technology from being abused? Because abuse yeah, it's is, a way. So, there is a way, yes. is so obvious. There is a way, there is a certain way and, uh, and there are certain physical layers which prevents from misuse of the technology. If it develops for a heartbeat, it will not be suitable for sound. We can because if you, I mean, if that technology is out and someone else may even modify it, then you can spy on everyone in an industry. Like, think of the White House. You'd have to put an extra, I don't know, what kind of cage around it, <laughs> uh, glass cage or whatever, so that they can be spied on. If you, if you can listen through every window, I don't think you can listen through a wall, but can you listen through a window? Um, well, it's challenging. Yeah. Uh, but again, we, we, we do not target there. I, so, I understand, so, I understand. So we are not uh, putting our efforts in checking yeah. if this is possible So or can not. you detect cancer? 
Well, there, there are some works we are doing on this, uh, some research. We with support the, the research in the university. Would, would, would cancer in my lungs sound different? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> would, would a tumor in my brain sound different? Exactly. What we are, th this is the things we are researching now. There are parts in the body where ma medical you know, surgeons are happy if they don't need to cut. Like a tumor in the brain, they're happy to detect it in a way they don't need to cut. Because on their way, they destroy a lot. Yeah, the idea is to detect it in a time. Yeah. So once you have a continuous monitoring, mm -hmm. which is inexpensive, you just have it on you or have it at home, you have it every day, you don't feel it, and once something happens, you immediately get, a, uh, get an uh, alert. So that's the idea of the uh, remote monitor, home, home monitoring. Home monitoring. Would it hear my heart attack coming? Yeah. <laughs> How long before? <laughs> like you're going to have a heart attack in five seconds. Four, three, two. Okay. What else would that detect then? The, okay, the sanity of my heartbeat. So it can tell me go to go to a cardiologist. Yeah. Um, At the airport, they would detect me. They can can they detect my identity? If you are uh, registered in advance. So the sound of my heart or the sound of my the sound of your heart is unique. It's unique. It's like a fingerprint. Like a fingerprint, exactly. Whatever, whatever excites me or bores me, in my heartbeat goes up and down. No, it's not related. It's not related to the heartbeat uh, rate. Yes. It's related to the heartbeat vibration. We call okay. it signature. So the signature preserves itself. So it can, can be faster or, low, or slower, but the signature stays as is. Now London is the city we know. That is, the, as, as far as I know, correct me if I'm wrong, the most covered by video cameras. I mean, you, if you, you really should smile when you walk through London because so many people are watching you, if anyone cares. Now, if, you'd, if they have the cameras, now they, they attach your device to the camera in some way or another. Now they can listen or simply identify. They can identify people by the heartbeat if, once they are registered. Yes. But you can combine the the heartbeat and the picture of anyone who's in the street, and then you've got a nice profile. It's, yeah. a, it's a real help of profiling people. It's like, you know, it's like Sorry, taking so your paranoid. picture. It's like taking your picture. They can yeah. take your picture, right? Yeah. And store it. So they do, do not know who are you, but they have your picture. It's the same, mm -hmm. same situation here. Yes. So if, if you want to be registered, mm -hmm. so you can be identified. Okay. If not, they do not know who are you. Not. Okay. What would you like to know? Yes, here you go. Hi, good afternoon. What's the margin of error to identify somebody through the heartbeat and uh, uh, blood pressure, etc., etc.? Sorry? Uh, so, how accurate is your identification of what somebody? What is the accuracy? Okay. So, it depends on the application. So, if you talk about heartbeat, it's very much ac accurate, it's less than 1% uh, deviation. Same for respiration. Uh, it's a little bit uh, higher for uh, blood pulse pressure. Um, for uh, saturation, alcohol and glucose, it's, uh, it depends. It's, it's a normal 15% deviation, which is a standard in this industry for, uh, for non-direct measurement. So, so we are more or less in, in the same benchmark as others. Would you combine all of them? In the device, that's yeah. The it will be uh, done by stages, but finally, yes. So I imagine you need to sign in like a, a database, with, and then you keep a baseline, right? Well, well, it depends. If you if we talk about heartbeat respiration, which is a time domain phenomena, we don't need the registry. We just count it. It's very simple. If you want to measure indirectly, like uh, blood pressure, glucose, alcohol, yes, you need the uh, calibration, like every device actually in this industry. They are calibrated. It's, my question is more um, because our heartbeat and uh, re uh, breathing, so respiration rhythm changes if you're sick or if you have a flu and so on. So how can you identify somebody if you have all these variables around? Well, by, by what we see by, so by now, it's, uh, there are some different differences in signatures, but the main features or features we found they are preserved. It's like, you know, you, 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 don't, you don't, do not change your heart. It you changed the rhythm, it changed the uh, maybe blood flow, 
but these certain things are preserved in your body for forever. So we are monitoring these things and we give, uh, get the unique results. Is this something you patent? Sorry? Is this something you, you have patented? Well, it's something we are uh, checking um, continuously. We haven't checked all the cases, all the diseases. But now we go mainly by to the mainstream, but to uh, gradually cover as much as possible. No, it's more like a, so you clearly f uh, figured a way to fingerprint yeah. people, right? Right. So that way you figured, because I never yeah. heard it before, this combination of things. Do you have a patent on this? Uh, patent, sorry? Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 this technology is patented and pilot is filed. Yes, we have several patents on this. Yeah. Last question. <laughs> um, so I saw when you were describing the market niches for the product, I saw several uh, companies mentioned there, including Juniper. No, no, this is the research company. So it's oh, not okay. okay, just the research company. Uh, you will, uh, in principle, uh, commercialize the product by itself. Right, so we can find it on the shelves and the continuous biometrics. Well, we go currently, our model is going business to business. So we will not face directly the customer, but we believe the customer will be faced by the uh, key players on the market. They know how to do it and we will cooperate with the um, main manufacturers in every niche. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Dr. Yevgeny Bayraman. This has been a Thank truly you. disruptive technology, a game changer, an absolute surprise.